Uh, the presentation will be done by Bastian and Eric. So, Bastian, if you're ready, I'm ready. ready. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Fitz, um, and uh, hi, and welcome all to uh, to uh, this first in-depth webinar in a, in a series of three after the general overview we we did two weeks ago. Um, in the next three weeks, we will uh, we would like to show you uh, uh, in depth how you can benefit from um, centralizing and uh, managing digital assets. Um, also, how Elvis Dam helps to make your production more efficient, and how it helps you to monetize on your assets. So, as you can see, starting today, um, um, we we will focus on uh, uh, the core digital asset management features uh, of Elvis Dam. Uh, and next week and the week after, we will uh, dive into other areas of, uh, of the Elvis Dam platform. So a quick recap on, uh, on um, uh, the reason why we're doing this today. Uh, why do uh, companies, publishers, brands, creatives need a dam solution? Uh, what you see is that uh, the publishing process becomes uh, much more visual. Um, uh, photo-centric uh, uh, publishing is uh, is uh, is increasing uh, a lot these days. Uh, the use of mobile devices dramatically grows, uh, is what we uh, experience, uh, and uh, the mobile video uh, consumption dramatically increases. It doubles in 2013. So um, all of that leads to uh, the need for uh, proper management of uh, of all those uh, digital files. Um, so a little bit more in detail, um, the companies who, who are facing this need need a way to manage the growing number of uh, of digital assets, and uh, they also need to be able to tap into new channels very quickly without the need to restructure uh, their organization. So uh, a, s a swiftness in in being able to uh, tap into new channels is very is becoming very important. So what do we see as typical issues uh, when there's no dam in place? Um, uh, typically the assets are all over the place, so they're either on hard disks or on uh, uh, old archive systems or inside production systems. It's really hard to have a, uh, to set, uh, have a central search or to find assets in, uh, in one place. Also there is a, a, a distinct lack of insight in and uh, control over uh, intellectual property. Um, so if you combine these two, it's it's really hard to make your digital assets available to uh, to new channels when when necessary. So that's where we come in with Elvis Dam, which is about centralize, produce, and monetize your digital assets. Um, um, centralize search and manage all the media assets. Uh, Elvis is also tightly integrated with uh, production environments uh, like uh, Whipping's Enterprise but also Adobe Creative Suite 6 for uh, a more efficient production and also allows you to syndicate and monetize uh, your assets in apps and websites. So um, I'm going to quickly introduce the topics that we will handle uh, today in the live demo, um, which is all about the concept of centralizing the assets in the dam. Uh, Elvis has a great user interface to search, preview, and manage millions of, of media assets. Uh, we use a lot of familiar concepts for things like flagging, uh, geotagging, and previewing HD video. And uh, this uh, this uh, allows you also to manage usage rights and, and control permissions over uh, who is allowed to use what assets and when. The power of metadata, Elvis has more than, than 400 metadata fields, including all important XMP uh, fields that are there. Um, you can also create custom metadata fields with your own company-specific information in Elvis to make it uh, really usable for, for your organization. Uh, with required metadata settings, you can configure that certain metadata is mandatory under, uh, under certain circumstances. And aside, obviously, from reading all the metadata from files at, at the import stage, we can also write back the metadata uh, into the files. So it's a really powerful metadata uh, management we offer in Elvis. Elvis also has great tools for uh, collaboration, uh, uh, collaborating on digital assets. You can 
email or, or even sort of publish a collection of assets for review, uh, comments and approval. And a, uh, a management interface allows you to actively manage photo assignments, designs or other material that, uh, that needs to be approved. And we'll also show how Elvis will uh, uh, offer you the ability to uh, create custom functionality in, inside the desktop client. Uh, this is a powerful uh, 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 desktop client plugin framework, as we call it, but it allows you to, with a set of samples we, we supply with the system, uh, create a lot of custom actions and uh, uh, customer-specific features that, uh, that, uh, that are uh, asked. And examples of those uh, are, are uh, things like a print contact sheet, uh, search in uh, other sources like Getty Images or iStock Photo. And Eric will demo a few uh, of those today. So that uh, concludes my little introduction uh, and I will uh, hand the mic to, uh, to Eric Corver for, uh, for a live demo of Elvis. Uh, um, I'm demoing on the original release version of Elvis 3.55 and uh, when installed the Elvis uh, desktop client has this nice uh, white blue logo and if you start up the uh, Elvis desktop client uh, you have to log in with the username and password and all your permissions and access uh, uh, in a sense of what folders you can access or what capabilities you can use are uh, linked to that login. Uh, the client can also choose a language in the desktop client. We provide some uh, default languages but you can have your own or your own language when you uh, want to uh, and that's simply a, a language file which has to be replaced or added to the system. Uh, Elvis comes with uh, login once so you can have your login uh, remembered for the next time and in the future versions we will also provide for the Windows platform a single sign-on uh, feature. Um, like I said when I'm logging in the permissions and the, the access capabilities I have uh, are all related to my login. I'm now logging, logged in as an admin user and therefore I have full capabilities available. Um, first of all an explanation of the, the Elvis a window or the actually the interface it consists of three blocks the column on the left is showing uh, a folder browser the favorites I can create uh, during uh, uh, my work and the recent section where all my searches and browse actions are uh, uh, are recorded and I can always get back to that later on on the right side we have the collections panel showing uh, all kinds of collected material in a nice virtual collection. We have a metadata section, a linked item section, and a version section showing all of the metadata, uh, linked item version of the selected assets. And on the top we have at first the main search window and uh, next to that we find some default options like import email and download original and some uh, what we call uh, uh, action plugins which can uh, be added to this uh, system or this user uh, uh, extending the capabilities of the uh, Elvis desktop client. Um, well first how to use uh, the Elvis search engine. Uh, well we go to the top left corner and type in a search query uh, for example beach and when we click the a search button or click enter uh, this search will be performed and what you see is that it immediately comes with a result of in this case 837 assets and they are presented in a thumbnail view uh, in the main window and we can we can change that view uh, like this with slider we can also have a more list view approach and we can also set the metadata for these uh, 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 thumbnails and I have set for example the file name here and the size what kind of image orientation or image aspect ratio is used and a rating uh, option which gives me the option to directly edit the metadata in the thumbnail. If you want different fields or um, more or less fields you can click the metadata button 
and see a complete overview of all available fields. And like Bastian said in the introduction, we have by default already uh, more than 400 fields available for all kinds of uh, 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 metadata related to the assets. Simple file information or dimension information, general metadata like tags, rating, description, uh, but also specific metadata for different uh, industries like publication uh, metadata for the publishing industries, uh, GPS location metadata, specific file type metadata for images, video, audio, or PDFs, for example, or, and that's not import uh, very important for uh, uh, a lot of partners here in this session, uh, Woodwing metadata. So we can set Woodwing metadata for uh, all kinds of uh, uh, information coming from the Woodwing uh, system. So. Um, when you search, you will get the result in the main window. When you want to search a little bit more, you just add more words, for example, a calm beach. And if I click uh, uh, again, you will see that there's another tab opened with just filtered down to only these two assets. Uh, searching this way means that the word beach and the word calm is searched over all available metadata. So all the fields I just shown as an, an, as an option to view in the thumbnail is, uh, uh, is used to find these assets. So if I go to the metadata panel on the right, you will see some of these fields are filled out you can view that fields are editable by having this uh, pen at the side and if I hover over a field I will get a uh, tooltip uh, window which shows me the, uh, the information, in this case the description of this asset. And this description uh, is telling me already that the words beach and calm are both in it. So it's, it's actually found these assets based on the description of the file. If I click this file um, you see that there are tags used. So if I click the tags uh, field, I can see that uh, uh, some of the tags, like beach, are uh, uh, used there, and therefore it found that asset. If we go back to the main search for beach, uh, I can also show you a little bit about the filtering options of Elvis. And we search for uh, uh, this criteria beach, and we still have 837 assets uh, 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 which have this uh, metadata. And I can filter it down, for example, uh, to a certain kind of asset. Um, all these metadata fields can be used as filters. So a kind could mean that it can be a container, a collection in Elvis, which has this uh, word beach inside it. It can also be a document. There are some uh, text documents inside here. Or a specific image, and then it will filter down to those images. We can add more filters if we like. For example, we can add a text filter. And we can uh, 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 have some extra text to filter it down to only a few assets. Or we can filter it down not to, to a kind of file, but to a type of file. So we already filtered it down to images, but image files come in many types. So I can say, OK, I, I, it has to be a JPEG file, or it has to be a specific EPS file. So this is way you can search, find your needles in a haystack, and filter it down to that specific uh, asset uh, you would like to uh, use. There's also another way of uh, 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 searching in Elvis, and that's not done by simply searching and filtering, but that could be searching, filtering, and even use location inside Elvis, because that's something which makes this DAM system a little bit uh, uh, different than all the database-oriented uh, uh, DAM systems. In Elvis, we have a search index index searching over a uh, folder structure. And this folder structure is really available in your system and is really available on your file store. So I can fix this search, beach, and show only the assets which are in a subfolder, for example, called demo zone. So now my complete search is limited not just by filtering to kind of type, 
but also to the location of these files. When I have these files found, I can select them, I can change metadata for them, and I can set different uh, metadata, for example, a status. A status is a very simple way of starting a workflow. By putting it in the state production, it could mean that another person using Elvis in the workflow is triggered to use this image inside the layout. You can also see that the metadata added to the file is can be represented by flags. So it's very quickly uh, visible uh, that this uh, file is, is, is usable for production and this file is usable uh, um, with the normal state draft, so it still has to be reviewed by, by somebody before it can be used. Um, we can also do that, for example, for rights management. This file has an in-house uses rights uh, 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 criteria, while this image is royalty-free. So a green star would mean for this user, and with the status production, it can be freely used without any restrictions or uh, 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 problems financially. Okay, so when we have found or browsed or both and used filters to select those assets we like, we can then start to make our final selection and add the images we like to a collection. This can be done by either dragging it to a new or existing collection in the collections area. So this way a new collection is created and by clicking the collections area you can see that it expands and shows the collections or I can later on add images to that collection if needed or remove that from the collection if not needed anymore. It's also possible to create a collection uh, just somewhere you would like. For example, this shared zone, I could say, okay, create a collection for me. New collection. Create it. And then it's already activated for me to find and uh, uh, find those images I would like or search and add them to this collection. So depends on how you work, how to create this collection. When I'm working on something, I might want to filter it down to uh, those things I, I would like to see. So, for example, I only would like to see uh, these 24 PDF files I have. And, oh, and uh, these PDF files I need to uh, query uh, for, for later use. So, uh, I might want to uh, create a favorite for that. It's very simple to do that. You can drag a tab into your favorites uh, environment and then you have the, 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 the search tab, the results uh, uh, as a favorite and you can reuse that again. Um, what you can also do is save it. Saving it means that you can have a particular name for it. So, demo PDFs. I can share it with other users in my group or other groups where I'm a member of and I can create a favorite of course to have it directly available inside my favorite and you can have as many as you want. You can create favorites from searches like this or even from different locations so if for example um, well, try this again maybe more generic search like this and I can browse it through to a specific folder nature I only have this one left I can say okay I want this specific folder inside my favorites so this is how we can uh, can change that um, okay when we are talking about metadata it uh, would be nice for example to show a collection and see what what metadata is available uh, for that so I can open these assets in a tab so actually showing the collection and when I'm selecting and looking at my metadata, I see some tags here, and probably if, if I click on a different asset, I see different tags. So what I could do is select them all, and I might want to add some uh, new tag, for example, demo. And you see it's already hinting specific uh, 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 names which 
uh, contain demo. So uh, I can choose for one of them. I can select these. And now it's appended to all of those. Uh, if we look at all the tags which are available of these four, I see there are a lot of them in common. For example, beach. Well, that's true because I actually found them on this uh, tag. But there are also a lot of them are not specific to all of them, but is specific to one of or more of the assets. And by selecting, for example, uh, well, let's say a little bit more neutral one, NP, um, then I will push this tag to all the assets, uh, even though it's now maybe w uh, w uh, only one of these assets containing this tag. And by confirming it or changing over to another selection, uh, th the change will be applied to the asset. So if I would click this one, I will now see that I have NP and demo added as a tag. And if I look at the other one here, I can also see that NP and demo are added to this tag. And the same goes for uh, description. Uh, if you have a description and you see the description here, it's on some text here. And if I click another one, it has a description. They all have nice descriptions. But I would like to add something to it. I simply select these assets. And if you look at the metadata field, it now shows between uh, uh, hooks multiple values. And what I now can do is uh, add before, something like this, and after, just to show you that although uh, uh, we have selected four assets, I can in individually append or prepend, or how do you call it, uh, information to the description of these assets. So again, by performing a confirm, I now have the description starting with before, then it's unique uh, description metadata, and then the newly appended after metadata. So, and this is a very nice way to uh, uh, to append and manage your your metadata for the tags uh, fields sp sp specifically, and for the description field as a text field in general. Uh, we can also have, of course, metadata fields with predefined values, something like the status, for example. And we also have fields, for example, with numbers uh, or date fields to set a specific date for uh, an asset in correct notation. So, um, yes. um, when we talk about uh, assets, uh, we most of the time we talk about individual assets and we can have a lot of assets inside Elvis and to demonstrate that I will do an import uh, by adding some files to that oh <laughs> there my demo goes a little bit off scale because I don't have anything on the desktop to import in this with this machine mm -hmm. okay well I then do a general search I think that will show you as well uh, by doing a general search I of course select of uh, sorry search for all assets and I have about uh, well close to a hundred thousand assets uh, in this demo system and I can filter it for example by kind and here you see a nice uh, representation of all the kinds of assets we have in uh, this uh, uh, this system and if we talk about certain kinds I would like to highlight uh, then I can talk about for example PDF documents if you talk about a PDF document um, most of them are, are, are single file, but if you would look up uh, a little bit more, um, let me check, something like this. This is a PDF, oh, it's still a m single page. Let's see if we have some. Hmm. Okay, let's fix to the demo zone. There we have some PDFs. And if I click one of the PDFs, we have an, uh, a feature in Elvis that from every PDF we import, we also create previews. And we create uh, maximum 1600 DPI uh, 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 pixel previews, which are well very good to f have an overall view of the PDF page. Uh, but we not create them only for the first page, we create, create them for all pages inside the PDF. And uh, if you really want to 
look into the PDF you might want to go and read and then you see this pixel PDF is not really functional so we also included a PDF uh, inline plugin for you uh, to see uh, the PDF completely as an, an inline PDF uh, uh, with the Adobe Acrobat plugin. Um, let's look at uh, some other uh, specific thing presentations for example if we talk about presentation uh, that's most time PowerPoint and we will ha also have support for keynote in the in the future versions of Elvis and PowerPoint presentations are uh, ingested into Elvis are saved and we do not create pixel previews for it but we create uh, HTML text selectable uh, uh, previews so it might not give you a hundred percent rendition of the exact position of the, 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 the elements in the PowerPoint but you do have selectable and also searchable text the same goes for the previously shown PDF we can search not just for the document itself but also the content inside text documents or PDF documents um, when we talk about video uh, we support uh, a low res previews for every asset ingested into Elvis so if I click on this uh, 720p HD movie uh, it will be uh, showing a lightweight preview that will be rendered by default of 10 minutes but you can you can change that if you would like and there's also an option to uh, click an HD button and then it will uh, uh, create for you or if it's already created will present to you the uh, the HD video so in, I think in this case it was not rendered then so uh, I, uh, I think I'll skip this one uh, but you would imagine Imagine that uh, if it's rendered once and we don't do it on the fly because then for 100 movies you're rendering uh, 100 uh, HDs as well, uh, it would not be sufficient. Uh, you can, uh, of course, click it once, then it's created for you, and for the next user it will be immediately available. Let's try it. No, it's not there yet. So, and we can, of course, I think for the people looking at it over a an internet line will not see the difference between HD and uh, SD uh, but we can also uh, uh, enlarge the view or have a one-on-one -on -one view or you can even use the interface uh, 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 grips here to create a much wider interface so you, so you have the, the option to use the full uh, real estate of your screen to present this uh, movie um, Okay. When we talk about publishing, then uh, we have uh, options inside Elvis to archive. Uh, for example, just by simply importing an InDesign document. I will have remove this filter a little bit. I'm now in my Elvis archive, and I actually archive two different uh, uh, productions. One is a, one of them is called Elvis Magazine, and this is just a production completely done in InDesign with images used directly from Elvis. For example, with the use of the Elvis Drive option, which makes images uh, as uh, 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 usable as dragging and dropping it from uh, a, a file server onto your uh, InDesign layout that easy and if we uh, select this uh, InDesign document you will see that uh, well there's some normal uh, information uh, but for example Woodwing information is not available because it was not produced in a Woodwing environment when I'm clicking on the linked items uh, area I do see nicely uh, that there are relations between this InDesign document and some of the placed images. So if I start to scan these kind of images and I double click on it, I do have patients using these images. How's that? How does that work? Well, when we ingest the images, when we ingest the InDesign document, we will create an index entry and we will extract metadata and that's extracting metadata that is metadata telling information about the asset itself but it can also mean for example with InDesign files that it also contains XMP metadata concerning the placed images and 
the individual images itself also have this XMP metadata, uh, which can be referenced or related to each other. Uh, when those assets come into a centralized area, like a dam, and then can relink themselves to find uh, the image which was placed in InDesign or vice versa, the uh, InDesign document used for that image. So I can see the individual, Im individual images, but also a PDF which was created from this InDesign document. And if we talk about uh, 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 no, let's 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 leave it at it was this way. Uh, then we have an archiving from a Woodwing environment. So if you have a publication system, uh, then your uh, uh, your Woodwing uh, uh, publication can be archived. It just needs some additional uh, statuses created in Woodwing and a uh, scheduled plugin uh, in Elvis which request those assets and import them into Elvis and will create the automatic cre created links but also the related links based on the metadata provided by the Woodwing system. So if I would click on this Elvis daily you will see a complete brand structure. So Elvis daily is the brand. Here we have the issue. Here we have the section and you can bring it down even to a dossier and dossiers are archived as well and are in fact uh, similar like uh, to uh, collections in Elvis. So if we would click here we have on, on fashion and lifestyle apparently some issue uh, or article about carnival and I can click the asset I can see that this asset is part of a dossier and if I click this specific asset it also says well I'm part of this dossier but I'm actually part of a web uh, page and if I double click this one you will see that there is an InDesign document now presented and if I go back there's it also says I'm contained by a PDF probably a PDF page created from this InDesign document and if I look at this individual InDesign document I see that there are more images here which I can find related to this InDesign document and there are also more pages of this document so apparently more images as well so and even the articles this information is not uh, from uh, uh, from Elvis gathered by this XMP metadata but this is uh, information which is uh, available through the Woodwing uh, publication information so if I would go to the metadata concerning the Woodwing uh, publication it now says it is his publication Elvis Daily from a print channel from an issue 303 and uh, it contains pages 1, 2, 3 and 4 and some extra master pages I believe and this can be used to search this specific issue or this specific publication later on uh, uh, using the search in Elvis another aspect of both of these uh, uh, assets is that we can use it to uh, uh, we can use this to have information about versioning when you are using uh, Elvis as a uh, production environment we have the option uh, to use uh, uh, let me go to a specific let me have it this one yeah, this is a nice one. This is our Elvis brochure. And uh, if I look at this brochure, do we have some with a history? Yes, well, this is a nice one. It's a very simple file. Uh, this is an InDesign document which has been altered with InDesign. And uh, these alterations are all saved or checked in to the system. And with that, we create a history. So by clicking this document, and going to the history I can see that this document has a certain state with a certain uh, setting that's the current version and if I look in the history I can also find that there was a version 1 and a version 2 and by option selecting I actually can do a comparison of those two pages and I can also see what kind of information 
uh, or actually what kind of use has been uh, 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 subjected to this asset over the last few weeks. So apparently this user Eric viewed it nine weeks ago, viewed it five weeks ago, viewed it, uh, previewed it, removed a relation some, week, some weeks ago. And this can all be tracked down as, uh, uh, as history of this document. And maybe even some more. Let's see. InDesign job test is also a very nice one. Here you see a, uh, a document created in InDesign. And if we look at the history, I can see when it was created. Actually, you, watch, you will see here some trash cans. That means that there is also a v version cleanup system uh, which is uh, uh, in place. So to prevent that you have uh, hundreds versions of a file when you actually need well five after a few months or something depending on the file type. So again, I can see a difference and I can also see what metadata has been changed by what user at what time and with what kind of client and it's even at what kind of IP address. So we can use that uh, later on for tracking the uh, use of this uh, asset. Um, okay. There's one aspect I, I forget to mention, and that's, uh, I think, still a very nice one, because out of the box it's not working, but uh, you should be aware that uh, when you are importing assets, or even when assets are in Elvis, or when users are using the uh, email functionality to add uh, uh, and upload assets, or even via a, a, a uh, a damn upload uh, web portal, for example, uh, you can have a uh, so-called required metadata policy in place. What does that mean? Well, when I have something to import, and this is not my system, so I have to be a little bit wary with that, but let's say we make a screen. Well, we, need, we make, yes. you just make a screen dump. So here's a screenshot, and uh, when I want to import that into Elvis, I just click Add Files or drag a folder or file into it. That uh, should be very straightforward, something like this. Um, what you will notice is that this system is configured to inform the user of information that at least one meta a required metadata field has not been set for this file. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, it means that on several visual indicators here or in the metadata panel or at least in, at point four of the import sequence, uh, the user is informed that this specific file needs uh, to be filled out with a specific metadata field. For example, the credit field. Um, I do that now with a picture, but if I would add a different file type, for example, a movie, then you will see that uh, this file type uh, doesn't require this specific information. So here you see, although it's uploading uh, uh, almost 600 megabytes uh, uh, of information in the background, uh, it doesn't require this specific field. And that's a nice thing about this required metadata. It's a, it's a server-side policy, so it's a server-wide uh, uh, policy and you can set it up in this way that you can have specific f file kinds, file types so mm, for images yes, for movies no, or for images uh, uh, not specifically but specifically for JPEGs but not for PSD so you can really filter that uh, or granulate that to a specific uh, setting and have users add those well really important metadata um, this can be done in a uh, so-called uh, uh, loose or strict fashion. A loose fa uh, fashion would mean that although I have not met this required metadata, I still am able to finish the import. Or you can have a strict policy which will just gray out the finish import button until these uh, required metadata uh, 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 settings are met. And this is, uh, well, part of your uh, success with your, your DAM system because metadata is key here. Um, okay. At last, as last point, I want to show you uh, some of the uh, options we have uh, in in Elvis uh, concerning uh, assets, and um, I will just clear everything. 
it's not finished do I want that no not really um, when I looking for something I find some assets I found some something here selection of assets or you can also have a collection of assets you can do several things you can right click and say okay I want to download the original well if you have the permissions of course or download the preview which means a maximum 1600 pixel preview for a PDF or uh, 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 a quick, uh, quickly generated HTML preview for a, uh, a Word document or a low res uh, uh, a movie preview, uh, a maximum 10 minutes for a movie. Or if, in, uh, if you have a collection, you can do that same thing, but then with everything in the collection. So that's uh, simple. And we have a big button on top as well. We also have a email button, and I actually wanted to show you the, the sharing option uh, we uh, are now building um, um, but I, I can only show you the, the, the email uh, functionality at this time and um, uh, this gives me the option to uh, s send this assets as a link to a temporary web page for a specific user I sent this email to it doesn't have to be an Elvis user it can be somebody outside your organization completely uh, it could be a partner you wish to uh, uh, get uh, approval for a PDF and you can also have it uh, showing say okay I have these two pictures of these nice uh, places uh, can you add some more and then you can simply click allow upload you can have them add to for example the same collection you are working on so your active collection is represented here or you can crea create a new collection uh, on the spot and you can even set the location where these files need to be downloaded to you can set a duration you can set the option to download these specific pictures or even only showing the preview and in the new version we will add some uh, options for example if I would create an email here it will open my mail browser but for those people who don't have a mail browser we will now provide an option uh, uh, with a link so it will have a link you can copy in your webmail uh, environment and we also will have a button here where it says uh, you can use it as an approval tool and then it will simply add those assets to a web page and for the selection of these assets the user has simply one uh, sorry two options it's approved or uh, 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 not approved and uh, there with that you can set metadata um, uh, which is uh, uh, set in Elvis and is uh, feedback to this user so the user will have in the favorites a option where it can uh, see all its send out email and can also change it or revoke that uh, email uh, if necessary so it will be an extensive uh, email uh, uh, option which we uh, then will call share option um, for the rest we have introduced with uh, Elvis uh, 2.6 or actually no sorry, Elvis 3.0 the use of uh, 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 action plugins and this is actually making use of the Elvis API which is available server side to extend extensibility not with new interfaces but within the current desktop uh, 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 interface and one of the examples uh, is for example context sheet if I have several assets uh, selected I can use this to create a context sheet this will actually use a template in a web browser and this template uh, will be filled with my selected images and uh, I can set up or change the setup of this template to for example one image with a lot of metadata uh, two images several and this is completely and that's actually the main point about uh, showing this this is completely configurable so you can have this completely customized to your own specific needs and out of the box this is already fully functional but uh, uh, with changing it to your own organization you can have very nice context sheets there are more options I uh, I can refer to for example usage report which actually makes use of the usage fee information you uh, have for assets in relation to the layout they were placed on and you can calculate that very quickly uh, uh, for uh, for showing you uh, your publication so 
to go back to these two archived uh, options. I will take the magazine disk time. I can say, okay, make a user's report for this document with these pages, and the metadata from these pages is used to calculate the total cost of uh, a web page. Last thing, and that's actually a new feature, uh, which, uh, which shows actually the, the power of these action plugins. Um, we uh, used, uh, or we have uh, uh, GPS uh, location metadata available in Elvis, and we can set that for images. And if I would select some images with that set metadata, or even images which I don't have that metadata set for, I can do it on the fly by selecting them and use another uh, action plugin which shows these file on a Google map. So here you see it's typically a a trip to uh, the Antarctic region uh, by somebody. But even if I don't have um, uh, um, images with specific metadata, I can simply drag it onto. Uh, let me see. Drag it onto the map, and well, some some exotic ore here. And by doing that, I will immediately have created a GPS metadata location for this asset. So, and I think with this little bit bumpy uh, presentation, I will uh, end for today. <laughs>